Welcome to episode 93 of Woods in the Word Getting Coffee. I'm Randall Wood. And I'm Isaac Wood. We are a father-son duo walking through the Bible together in hopes of bringing God's Word to life in your life. Pour a cup of coffee and join us. Well, Isaac, uh, I've got my Midway Baptist cup this morning. Pretty traditional standard start for the morning on a Wednesday. And uh, just uh, looking forward to talking about Jesus, our Savior, this morning as we continue to think about the names of Jesus. Yeah, we've transitioned here from knowing God more to knowing Jesus more. Um, and so it's been a fun sort of pivot there. We'll do this for a couple of weeks, headed into Easter, um, but we're still drinking coffee. So no yeah. transition there. Drinking oh. coffee in the morning, in the word. Excited to be with you. Um, and we can kind of dig into uh, one of Jesus's more important roles to us. Absolutely. Yeah. Jesus as Savior. And we see him defining this for us first by example and then in words uh, in Luke chapter 19 uh, with the story of Zacchaeus. And so let me just read uh, the first 10 verses of Luke 19, then we'll have lots to talk about. Uh, talking about Jesus, he entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, Hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it <laughs> fourfold. Four times, fourfold. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus saves some strange, interesting people, doesn't he? He does. And aren't we all strange and interesting? Yes. I mean, we'll see him uh, here with a tax collector. I mean, the fact that he was a chief tax collector the first thing that tells us about Zacchaeus is that he was a traitor to the Jewish people. He had gone over to the other side. He was working for Rome. And the, it also casually mentions that he was rich because a tax collector for Rome, the sweet part of that deal is you could collect as much tax as you wanted as long as Rome got theirs. So the fact that he was rich <laughs> suggests that he was pretty good at his job but he was also extorting money from the people far beyond what Rome required. So this guy's a snake, right? And um, yep. you know, Jesus saves prostitutes. He saves murderers. He saves Hollywood actors today, tattoo artists. <laughs> uh, you know, one of the famous rockers from my day was Alice Cooper, heavy metal guy. And now he's preaching Jesus everywhere he goes. Uh, this causes us some some challenge sometimes, but uh, he saves very unlikely people. Well, but there's one thing in common with all those people that he saves, um, all those people and all of us. Um, and it just jumped out at me as you were reading the story of Zacchaeus there, uh, Luke 19, verse 3, talking about Zacchaeus. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. Yes. And there's all there were lots of crowds around Jesus. And you got to assume if there was a crowd around Jesus, all those people were seeking to see Jesus, to see the spectacle, right? Right. But it's interesting that it called out that Zacchaeus was seeking to see who Jesus was. Mm. Who is Jesus? And whenever you seek Jesus, he promises that you will find him. Yes, it's a wonderful point. And so more than just going to see the circus that was Jesus, go to see the show, to be entertained, Zacchaeus was looking to see, to find out who Jesus was. Um, and as we've talked recently, Jesus is a very big deal. <laughs> He's yes, very important yes. 
to this world, to all of history. Um, and Jesus says he came to seek and to save the lost. We're all lost, but we don't all get saved. Right. right? And so the ones that get saved are the ones that turn around and seek Jesus in response to him seeking them. Um, and so just interesting that Zacchaeus was looking for Jesus and man, he found him. He right. found him. And then Jesus responded in a personal way to save Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus didn't necessarily know that he was seeking Jesus to be saved. Right. He just wanted but to he, know more about He it. wanted to know who Jesus was. And guess who Jesus is? <laughs> He's a savior. Right. And so when you find out who Jesus is, you will be saved because that's what he is. That's who he is. And that's what we need. And so Zacchaeus is, I mean, picture this. He's this rich tax collector. Uh, he's, you know, despised by the crowd, uh, but yet very well to do. And here he is running down the street, which a, a business professional would never do, and climbing a tree, for goodness sakes, uh, so he could see Jesus before he missed him. There was this urgency in his heart. I got to I gotta see Jesus. Now, where does that come from? He's curious to know Jesus, but we have to understand where that curiosity comes from, because the Bible says no one does that. You, you don't wake up one morning and decide to find out. Not on your own. Not on your own. Uh, Romans 3 says, none is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they've become worthless. No one does good, not even one. And then Jesus said in John chapter 6, no one can come to the Father unless the Father draws them. So the cool thing here is seeing Zacchaeus' hunger to get to Jesus helps you understand God's already seeking him. God's already drawing Zacchaeus in. Uh, and you know something great and wonderful is about to happen because Zacchaeus doesn't have the capacity to seek Jesus on his own. It's only because Jesus is already wooing him. And so Jesus, of course, is going to respond to that. Jesus is going to pick him out of the crowd because Jesus knows that his heart is open and that he's hungry and that he's responded to the tug that Jesus has pulled on his heart. Well, and he says there, I mean, what are the qualifications to be sought after by God? Hmm. To be lost. <laughs> yeah. So the good news yeah. is. Right. We don't have the, to work the, too hard at that. We don't have to. You don't have to qualify for Jesus to be seeking you. He came to seek and then to save the lost. Um, and so we were all lost. And I think that's an important um, element. We're talking about Jesus as our savior, right? Yes. So um, we should state implicitly that we need saving. Yes. Like the, the, um, the reason that Jesus is seeking and saving the lost is that we are lost. Um, and what we need is saving from ourselves and from our own sinful ways. What we we don't need confirmation. We don't need acceptance. We don't need um, service. Right. We need saving. And Jesus does save us. He finds us and saves us. And we, it, that saving is from ourselves and from our own sinful desires. So it's not, he doesn't, like in Zacchaeus, he doesn't show up and say, Zacchaeus, I affirm you. I'm seeking you come as you are and stay as you are. Right. He doesn't have Zacchaeus has a party for Jesus. Right. And a bunch of his lost friends are there. And sometimes we as Christians, we're like, Oh, we got to go, go find the lost. Jesus hung out with that list that you said earlier, prostitutes right. and tax collectors and the, the lost of yes, but it's because they sought him. They came to see who Jesus was, and he saved them. He didn't go to brothels and hang out and say, hey, I'll see you here next week. Right. He wasn't at the tax collector convention and then back the next week at the same tax collector convention. He was at the tax he, – he would have the tax collectors come to him, and guess what? They weren't going to the tax collector convention in the same way the next week. Right. Like he, he he saved them from themselves. And so it's important that we know, like when you're seeking Jesus, you're seeking him. His role as savior is to save us 
from who we were to change us, to transform us, to have us be literally to be born again, created anew. It's not stay the way you are and no. stay where you stay change. where you are doing what you are. Um, it, it, it's a change. It's it's a saving. He pulls you out of what was destroying you and gives you his life. And so it's, it's hard. We can't talk about Jesus as Savior without acknowledging that we all need saving. Um, right. That we, because of the sin in our lives, have created a gap between us and God. And in order for us to be with God, to know him, Jesus had to come and save us. That's right. And he does that one person at a time. He saves individuals. And so here he is calling Zacchaeus down out of the tree. He called him by name. Now, there's no indication that they've ever met before. I mean, because Zacchaeus didn't know who he was. And so here's Jesus calling him by name, which if he knows his name, that means he also knows everything about him. And so Zacchaeus is, you know, a little bit undone by the reality that here's Jesus. He already knows me. I was coming to see him. He already knows me. And he wants to come to my house. I'm trying to imagine how fast he came down out of that tree, faster than he went up it, I suspect. <laughs> and so, so hurry and come down. I must stay at your house today. So I'm going to make my home with you. Uh, and, and that's exactly what happens. And so uh, Jesus knows your name, my friend. He knows everything about you. He loves you so much. Uh, that he says, come on, I want to, I want to hang out with you today. Uh, and our response is to jump down out of the tree and take him home with us. Cause that's what, uh, that's what Zacchaeus did. And, and he, well, well, and he knows all that about us. He knows all that about you and, and he's still seeking you still coming. He's out. still seeking you. Zacchaeus had changed nothing about his life when he climbed right. up that tree. Exactly. He's he still was, lying, cheating, uh, tax collector. Exactly. But Jesus still called him by name and said, hey, I'm with you. Yeah, he didn't say, hey, clean up your act, come down out of the tree, and then we can talk. No. Yes. And so the, the meeting of we don't have to clean ourselves up to come to Jesus. No. Not, but then not. once we meet Jesus truly and we trust him and choose to follow him, he will then clean up our lives through us. Right. So let's look so at what salvation it's does. It's not on us. Yeah, it's not on us. Right. No, but let's let's watch and see what salvation does. How does it play out? The first thing we notice is salvation will cause most religious people to grumble. It's interesting that all of a sudden they appear in the story. We're not even told who <laughs> they are, but we kind of already know because this is the 19th chapter of the gospel. And we've seen they around uh, for a, a good while. So uh, when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. Uh, rel deeply religious people, traditionally religious people, will have a problem because they've forgotten the fact that they also need a Savior. Uh, because the religious people, even within the Christian faith, right? right. the religious people are focused very much more on individuals working to earn God. Well, right. And, you know what Zacchaeus said? And, He's going to give us a bad so name, a bad rap. People they see, know, they you know. see the, the rough, the rough edged. Right. Sinners. And they can't be with us. Cause that, that shines a bad light on who we are. And right. the religious people forget who they are. Cause every single one of us, every single human on the planet is a rough edged sinner. Right. No, exactly right. And just how how obvious is it to to everyone else? <laughs> um, and and so the religious religious people have focused on man's um, man's actions and putting up a facade of being worthy of being saved. Um, they they focus less on God and Jesus and His worthiness and focus on well, now that we've figured this out, we are worthy to be called a child of God and you're off you're off base at that point um the humility required to be saved is to acknowledge that you're not worthy and it's all through Jesus who is our savior it's not our works that are the savior 
Oh, absolutely true. Uh, but the interesting thing is, is that Jesus doesn't pay any attention to the grumblers, and we shouldn't either. He doesn't let them deter him from his mission. He's come to seek and to save the lost. They don't recognize their need. So he he goes right past them straight to Zacchaeus's house. Um, and, and when he gets to Zacchaeus's house, now we see that true life change has happened to Zacchaeus. Uh, the Holy Spirit conviction. Now, the Holy Spirit will bring fast conviction and he will bring slow conviction. And it's not up to us to monitor the timetable of how fast someone repents and how fast someone understands their behavior needs to change. That's the spirit of God, but he will do it. So having, having been convicted of his sin, having met the Lord Jesus, Zacchaeus is starting to write checks. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's starting to turn loose of the money that he held so tightly all of a sudden has no grip on him anymore. And so his heart now is to make things right. And so uh, half of my goods I give to the poor because I've ignored the poor my whole life. Um, and so he just became half as rich as he was. However rich rich was, you just divided that by two. Uh, and he says, if, now the interesting thing about the Greek word if, it can also be translated since. And that's the context mm. It tells you, and uh, most people would have known that it wasn't if he had defrauded anyone. It would be since he has defrauded many people. He's going to restore it fourfold. Now, that's biblical. That's that's what was required in the law. If you cheated someone, you got caught, you had to pay them back what you cheated them times four. And yep. so he's being very biblical here. He's He knows what is required of him. He's making it right. And, and so um, the Holy Spirit will change your life. Now, our goal is to be patient in that process, patient with our discipleship. Uh, we, we're clear with the truth of, of God's word, but we're also gracious in knowing that the spirit of God is going to show the person when they need to make you know, it. We can't you, know what else, you know what else I see here in Zacchaeus' mission then, right? So um, the Bible tells us that God works all things together for good for those that love him and follow him right wow. um, and so Zacchaeus chooses to follow Jesus here at this point in time he had not done anything good with his life to this point right but then God turns around and uses all of Zacchaeus's past sins transgressions and mistakes and they become his mission field yes Zacchaeus right. gets saved and he says, I'm going to go make right everything I did wrong. But now this becomes, he becomes, he goes and, and helps the poor here. Right. What's his, and how often, why are you doing this Zacchaeus? You're a crook. How often do we see this, that, you know, Jesus, someone finds Jesus, they seek Jesus, they save him. And then that life that they've lived in sin and failure and pain becomes their mission field. Right. You know, whether it's the, the, the convict that then goes back to the prisons and preaches in the prisons right. or um, the drug the, addict, the, the alcoholic, the drug right. addict who now right. leads AA meetings like it's right. it's because part of that's because that's where you're familiar with. That's the life you've lived. You understand the people that are struggling in the same way that you struggle. And so so often those struggles that you walk through in life. That is that has prepared you for often that's the mission field that then God has planned for you. And we've all been put on this planet for a purpose. Um, and oftentimes it's the struggle that we went through that then God says, Hey, you are the you are now perfectly prepared to walk into my mission field that I have for you. And guess what? It's gonna be familiar to you. Yeah. <laughs> because right. you can now speak to these people. And so and they're he the ones that are going to know the life change because they knew you before. They see the difference. Here's yeah. Zacchaeus giving out money. And every time they saw him before, he was take, 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 take. And now he's give, give, give. What changed Zacchaeus? It's not what, it's who. Jesus changed me. Yeah. So this is the beauty of what happens. And, and, and Jesus rightly refers to him as a son of Abraham here. Now, not not genetically, not biologically, but spiritually, because he was a son of Abraham before. He's a Jewish uh, person, 
That means he's from the lineage of Abraham somehow, but now he's a man of faith. He's a person of faith. Faith is how you come to Jesus. That's we're we're sons of Abraham because we believe the Bible says. And, you know, there was another uh, guy that the Lord saved that was a strange guy. He was a Gentile. He was a jailer for the Roman Empire in Philippi. He had thrown Paul and Silas into jail, and they're praising the Lord, and he's having to close his windows because he can't stand the singing. And <laughs> there's this earthquake, and the jail has been emptied as far as he knows. So he runs out to see what's happening. He sees all the open doors and he's ready to kill himself before the Romans do. And Paul says, hang on a minute. We're all still here. And he is so convicted by that. Paul, he brings Paul out of prison with Silas. He falls down in front of them and says, what must I do to be saved? He recognized it. The, the prison guard recognized he was the prisoner. He recognized and he, 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 recognized he needed a savior. Right. What you must cannot I be saved. saved. Yeah, right. You cannot be saved without acknowledging that you need saving. Right. And that's why it's a great question. And the answer is even better. Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Put your faith and trust in him. And so here we remember the mission of Jesus is salvation. He said, I came to seek and to save the lost. We have to remember who the seeker is. It's Jesus, and he is also the savior of the world. He came to seek and to save the lost. And friend, he knows you. He knows you by name. He knows everything about you. He's madly in love with you, and he wants to change your life from the inside out. And that can start today when you turn and follow him. It's a big spiritual game of hide and go seek. Um, we're all hiding from Jesus. Jesus is seeking for us all. So my encouragement to you is play hide and go seek like a two-year-old. Yes. yes. <laughs> two-year-old always yes. pops out and says, here I am. Right. <laughs> it's the easiest game of hide and go seek in the world. Yes. Be that for Jesus. Pop out. Jesus, here I am. Yes. You found me. Yes. Seek after him and you will find him because he's seeking you. He's drawing you to himself. Right. All you have to do is respond and turn to him, and he's right there to bring you in as you are, to bring you in, but he loves you so much, he's not going to leave you as you are. He's going to transform you into what you were created to be, a child of his on mission for him, so that you can go then be, uh, be his seeker as well and be seeking and drawing others on his behalf. You know, there's a wonderful testimony. We'll close with this. When the woman at the well met Jesus, her first act was to run to the village and say, come see a man who's told me everything about myself. And she brought the whole village out to experience Jesus. And so much so that he ended up spending two full days with them. And after that, the Samaritans said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you have said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. Jesus is the Savior of the world, my friends, and we all need a Savior. Best thing you can do is, as Isaac said, pop out from behind the couch and say, here I am. <laughs> here I am. Let Jesus save you, and your life will begin fresh and new from that moment. God bless you as you follow Jesus. Amen. Yeah. <sighs>